In this lesson, we'll be patterning a pocket toolpath. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to create a toolpath pattern. Let's carry on with the file from the previous example, and now we want to duplicate our contour a few more times and then create another pattern. So I'm going to carry on by just working on these contours and creating a duplicate. So now on the third duplicate, I'm going to go ahead and edit. And I want to work my way around first by selecting the chain that I want to machine. And then I want to set up the tool orientation. So this time I'm going to reselect a face for the orientation. It's going to be based on the inside bore here. And I will need to flip the Z axis and flip the X axis to make sure again that my Y is pointing up. So we're really just rotating this part around. From here, everything is okay. And we'll take a look at the toolpath that's been created and then duplicate it one more time, modifying the copy. So again, we're going to change the geometry selection to machine from this side. And then we want to modify the tool orientation. Now we can do this by simply flipping the Z and the X axes, or we can reselect our geometry. From here, I'm going to say, okay. And notice that each time we're using the same parameters again, however, we're just reselecting the contour to cut and the orientation of the tool. Let's do a quick check by simply validating these four. When we go into simulate, the original stock is going to be there. So we're going to have a lot of collisions. But what we want to look at is the fact that we are machining all four positions. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up. And note that we do have four separate counter bores. Now that we have those four separate counter bores, we can select all four of them and create a pattern. But it's also a good idea for us to modify the name to something a bit more representative. So I'm going to call this 2D bore 1 because this is position 1. And I'm going to do this one, 2D bore 1. And then I'm going to put a parentheses 2. And then this is going to be position four. If we use the same nomenclature we did when drilling, we went one, two, three, four around that direction going counterclockwise. So this one is going to be our 2D bore four. And then this one here we'll rename to be 2D bore four parentheses two. So now that we have those four renamed, I'm going to select them go to setup and create a new pattern. This is going to be a mirror and the mirror plane that we want to use in this case, if we expand our models is going to be the YZ plane. So in this case, we're going to select YZ and notice the preview on the screen showing exactly where we're machining the other sections. So we're going to say, okay, and then we can simulate the entire setup. So again, I'm going to jump ahead. I'm going to go past a few of the operations, work past the drilling and tapping on the top, work past the four spot drills, the four half inch drills, and then we're going to start machining these counter bores. So you notice that it's grabbing each and all the orientations are correct. We don't have any collisions with anything. It is able to create the geometry and get to all the sections that we need. And we're not done with this by far, but this is a great way for us to understand three plus two or multi-axis positioning because these are all two axis operations or in some case the 3d adaptive from the top but what we're doing is we're changing the orientation of the tool in each case and while a traditional cnc mill could handle all these it would require a custom fixture and multiple positionings or repositionings of the part whereas a multi-axis machine and in this case so far we've only used a single rotary axis position could get to all of this geometry without any trouble. So while so far we've machined from the top and then did our multi-axis positioning around the side, we could have done this on two separate machines utilizing a fourth axis. But with a fifth axis machine, we're able to do all of these operations without having to remove the part at all. This is a great time for us to save before we move on to any more operations. So make sure that your file is saved and then you can move on to the next step.